I kept my promise, ma. I told you that the television show will be excellent. Hey, yo, Vic, talk to ma. Why is ma not responding? Guys, I can 100% say that they saved the best for last. This episode was absolutely incredible and so disturbing at the same time. Look, I want it to be about a villain. I don't want a redemption arc. And there's definitely no redemption arc when it comes to Oswald. The guy is a bad guy. He's a bad person. And this episode, you know, just puts the icing on top of all that and showcases him at his most despicable and disgusting. Look, I'm just going to say, Oz does something in this episode that just, you know, I want Batman to beat him up. I just want Batman to get hold of Oz and just beat him into a pulp. The guy is sickening. The guy is not a hero. If you're watching this and you think Oz is a hero, then I don't know what television show you are watching. But the guy just knows how to play his hand. And for him even to do something as simple as just tell the truth, he can't even tell the truth to his own mother. And this basically you know completes that arc that we saw in the previous episode where we had a look at Oswald's backstory the guy is you know I don't know how to say this guys but he is a monster and his own mother said the devil lives in my house and if you look at the things that Oswald has done he has always been a character that has no remorse, you know, and even after eight episodes, we still don't know what is really going on with Oz, he is such an unpredictable character, and I feel like that is incredible, because when we are going to meet him again in the Batman Part 2, there's still going to be that element of, you know, it's difficult to read where his head is at, at any given moment, he can just snap and then just do something that just makes you despise him as a character. Now we finally get to see the showdown between him and Sophia. I can't go into much of the story guys because I'll be giving away everything and this is a you know this is a perfect example of when you do television the right way the script the strength of the script is on full display production value the acting Getting an A-list actor like Colin Farrell to play your lead in a television show, it will just work in your favor like nine times out of ten. I'm just saying, guys. And he carried this show and then you add Kristen. She just, you know, as Sophia, she just added another layer to this television show. And I can't speak highly enough about the acting, guys. The acting has been absolutely incredible. The visual design and the production value, you know, it feels like you were, you know, I was watching the Batman, but just, you know, on the small screen, it feels that way. Matt Reeves deserves a lot of credit for, you know, what he's managed to achieve with this show. I wasn't expecting it to be great, but now that I've watched it, it makes complete sense that there needs to be a lot more of these spinoff shows, you know. Just to give the villains, because I mean, Batman has such a brilliant rogues gallery. Give the villains time to shine. Now, recently, I'm just, you know, going off topic here a little bit. But recently, they've announced that Barry Keoghan's version of the Joker might also be getting his own spin-off series. And I think that is, that is insane, guys. If that happens, I'm on board, guys. I mean, the Matt verse... What he's doing here is is something on another level. It's something on another scale. And James Gunn should just stay away. Let Matt Reeves cook up a storm and do what he does best. And we'll end up with, you know, probably the best version of Batman that we've ever seen. And guys, you know, this this is a character study. It's a character study of a villain. 
Oswald Cobblepot. And it never, you know, turned into something that it's not supposed to be. It has always been a character study. And the penguin, you know, that final scene when we see him in the suit, that is that is very iconic. You know, it's another step towards building this whole universe that Matt is busy with. And Colin Farrell has managed to turn this character into, you know, probably my second favorite Batman villain on screen after Heath Ledger's The Joker. You know, this is a, another level of genius. And I need to watch this episode again, guys. I'm not going to lie. This thing... This thing actually devastated me, you know, especially that last section. And it's a great or little thing. And it's just it's just mind bending, guys, how this whole thing played out. And this has to be my favorite television show of the year. I think this is even better than House of the Dragon. And I absolutely loved House of the Dragon. You know, but this is just a cut and a step above House of the Dragon. So, guys, I'm a massive fan of HBO. I think HBO, whenever they make a television show, they just know how to do it the right way. I just have to say, guys, that this show is mind-blowingly excellent. Do not sleep on The Penguin. You will be doing yourself a disservice if you are not watching this show. Watch this show immediately. Binge watch it right now because all eight episodes are out. You will have a newfound respect for what's happening in Gotham. Yes. I don't know what I'm going to watch now, guys. This is done. I already feel a void for good television, which is not a good thing. But that's it for me, guys. Please let me know what you guys think about The Penguin. I think it's absolutely a masterfully crafted television show. And a perfect example of how to do a television show based on a villain. Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. I will catch you on the next video.